are, are you a Sunni Muslim or a, I'm a Sunni Muslim, yes. Just reading the newspaper. Yes. You see the deep division yes. between Sunni Muslim and Shiite Muslim yes. and other divisions. Why is that? Why it's a very good question. And why you know uh, what, what we find what we find throughout history, without exception, you have this issue of people becoming polarized in their viewpoint. What is Side the purpose note. of your existence? So the Quran says very clearly that Allah created the jinn and the ins, the spirits and human beings, for no other reason but to worship me. Tell people to work towards an end of days when the end of days may not happen. If there's going, if there's a possibility of the black hole in the middle of our galaxy expanding and sucking us in. It's a good question, brother. The, the thing is, how do we understand the reality of anything? Often it comes through uh, validating the, the very speech or the very text, the very concept that we're being told. Now, why should I believe this to be true as opposed to that being true? And are you, are you religious at all yourself or? No. Not really? No. You say you'd, you'd be atheist or agnostic or? I believe in black holes. You believe in black holes? Okay, well that's interesting. I, I mean, I believe in black holes as well. Uh, but I would regard myself as somebody who follows a religion. But I, I don't know how that how would... How religion relate to? I mean, when religion started, there was no knowledge of black holes. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the fact is that there were... How, how do you resolve there, today? There was no knowledge of... You're right. There was no knowledge of, of many scientific phenomena. Are you recording me? If, if, it, if it doesn't want to be filmed, then just film me then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, don't film me. Just, just film me, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, a phenomenon existing that perhaps religion did not allude to or decide to talk about doesn't logically therefore mean that religion is truthful or is false. It just means that that knowledge was not important for us in terms of our role as human beings on Earth. That doesn't mean to say finding out about black holes and their function within the universe is not, uh, you know, a great uh, uh, field to, to study, but it just means that it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, uh, a necessary study in in relation to the purpose of our existence. It's a peripheral what side. What is the purpose mode. of your existence? So the Quran says very clearly that Allah created the jinn and the ins, the spirits and human beings for no other reason but to worship me. Now, that does not mean to say that all you do is worship God and you don't go into any field of study or subject that might not necessarily be seen directly related to the Creator, but it means that the actual purpose of existence is to recognize the Creator and not attribute partners to the Creator and worship only that creator. Um, but I would argue that the knowledge of the black hole, for example, actually for me as a Muslim, as a believer, makes me even more awe-inspired in the one who created the black hole and the power of it and the nature of it and the function of it. Um, so I, I believe that all knowledge can in fact give us a link to the Creator because we believe obviously from our paradigm that the Creator is the cause of everything and the Creator of everything. So to be awe inspired by a black hole would actually be regarded as a form of worship because you're... But a black, what is the result of matter, people, worshippers, yes. entering a black hole? Well, we, we believe scientifically that would be destruction, right? That you would be squished to an infin infinitesimally small, uh, you know, uh, a matter. But, but the, the, the point what I'm trying to make to you is that um, the phenomena that were not relayed by scripture do not confirm or deny it. So I, I would say that's not perhaps a, a, a reasonable way of assessing whether religion is a good or bad thing. In, in Jewish and, and Christian, 
what little I know is they're working towards an end game. The, sorry? There's an end there's an end of days yes, when yes. when they'll join God or Yes, yes. I don't know what. So but we, there's an end of day. Yeah. Why would they tell people to work towards an end of days when the end of days may not happen? If there's going if there's a possibility of the black hole in the middle of our galaxy expanding and sucking us in. It's a good question, brother. Uh, what's your name, by the way? Sorry. So, Seth, the, the thing is, how do we understand the reality of anything? Often it comes through uh, validating the, the very speech or the very text, the very concept that we're being told. Now, why should I believe this to be true as opposed to that being true? And I would say that and I, I'm just guessing, are you a man who likes science or are in science yourself or you have an interest in science because you raise a black hole. So, I, I mean, I love science Moderate too. interest, okay, I don't no, know no, science. No problem. Now, what I would say is that for me, why do I believe what the Quran tells me? Is it based upon just feelings or is it just based upon blind faith? Or do I find good reasons to accept the notions that it puts to me? So, for example, end of days. Uh, what, being, what, what is the, uh, the the end of days in Islam? So we, we believe, Allah says in the Quran, that the day of judgment, Allah will fold up this universe and destroy it. <laughs> and then humankind will be raised again. And they will be then, the, the accounts of your life, as it were, will be measured, the good and the bad. And Allah says that if the good outweighs the bad, for you is paradise. And if the bad outweighs the good, then it's punishment and hellfire. Now, the point here is this, why should I believe that concept? Because just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. Who came up with that? Sorry? When, when that came from a man's pen Yeah. some time ago. Well, that's one theory. That's one theory, right? So the question that I ask myself, being born in this country, educated here, I would say culturally quite aware of a British society, was really from a young age, why should I believe this stuff, right? Because anybody can say anything, right? If somebody says there's fairies at the bottom of the garden, why should I accept that notion, right? What's the evidence? Why should I believe that to be true? If it is true, of course I don't believe that there are fairies at the bottom of the garden. Now, studying the Quran, it has a very interesting concept within the Quran. Uh, just like we find in science, a falsification test. So Allah says in the Quran, if this book had come from anyone other than your Lord, surely within it you would have found many contradiction and error. Because the Quran makes many claims. Some are historical, some are pro prophecies, some are touching on nature, explanations on things that could be very much linked to what we've discovered recently. And so Allah makes this claim, had this come from anyone other than your Lord, surely within it you would have found many contradictions and errors. So it gives us the falsification test that if you find contradictions and errors within a text, then it's not from God. And now what you do is you study the claims that it makes. Do they resonate with facts? Do they resonate with knowledge that we can test? And when we apply those tests, I believe, from my subjective reasoning and investigation, that the weight of the evidence for me was overwhelming in terms of it valid, being validated that it's not the work of any human being. And that the only explanation for me was that this is from God. And so then on that basis, it tells me that there's an afterlife, I accept it. It tells me there's life after death, I accept it. I can't prove it. It's not an analytical or empirical evidence-backed uh, evidence sorry, proposition. But it's one that I accept because of the, ver the verifying that the book itself could not be the work of man. So one of the things, for example, in the Quran, there's a chapter called Surah Rong, Rong. And it talks about an incident between the Persian and the Roman empires. And historically at that time, the Persian empire nearly destroys the Roman empire. 
the Quran makes a claim. And the terminology in the Quran is between three to nine years. The Persians will once again, uh, sorry, the Romans will once again defeat the Persians. Now, this was a very counterintuitive claim because one was on the brink of annihilation and the other one was still a superpower. Now, the prophecy could have failed on many fronts. Number one, the Persians could have gone. The no, Persians, no. well, he won't film. He won't film you. The Persians could have gone back and finished off the Romans because they were on the brink of destruction. Finally, the Muslim Empire, the Islamic Empire, actually defeats both empires. But that could have happened before the uh, Romans got back to the Persians. So there were so many different ways. Or an, an empire that's on the brink of destruction could self-implode. Right? It can just destroy itself basically but none of those things happened the counterintuitive claim that the Quran made came true now one can argue rationally that this could have been added in afterwards so you knew what happened and you just sneakily added this in so there are ways of obviously testing that theory now when that's not the case and we can establish that's not the case we have to ask the question why would a man in a desert in the seventh century? Let me ask you a different yeah, question. Yeah, sure, so please. Something I've always been curious about. Are, are you a Sunni Muslim or? A, I'm a Sunni Muslim. Yes. Just reading the newspaper. Yes. You see the deep division. Yes. Between Sunni Muslim and Shiite yes. and, and other divisions. Why is that? Why? It's a very good question. And why, you know, uh... what, what we find, what we find throughout history, throughout religious people, you know, Jews and Christians have the same. Yes. So without, without exception, you have this issue of people becoming polarized in their viewpoint. I mean, America yourself, you have We're people as polarized as, you can as politics, right? Look at Trump, and you look at you know Democrats and the and the Republicans, to the extent where you've got people storming government buildings, the Senate, right? Potentially wanting to kill, shouting to kill Pence with guns, right? So what I'm trying to explain to you is that this is a human condition, not a condition necessarily perpetuated by religion. So the question we need to ask ourselves is that, is it in fact the religion or the politics or is it actually the people themselves who are interpreting the politics and the religion completely incorrectly as it was never supposed to be so i would i would suggest humbly that neither the democrat party or the republican party in its core beliefs would ever teach the people to storm the senate with guns and say that this was a reasonable reaction to political discourse. Yet you have thousands of people that did, right? So I would argue that it doesn't follow the very tenets of what democracy, freedom, what your, what your fathers, you know, wrote down. I don't think it, it, it seems to resonate with what that taught people or said to people, but actually it's a human condition where people have manipulated those perhaps core teachings that were quite good and noble and and in good faith and actually made it something quite evil it's quite quite corrupt now the same thing with sunni and shia if you actually study that a lot of it yes it d does deal with some religious differences but much of the conflict is geopolitical and political it's not about religion and and unfortunately that is a problem but Sorry, yeah sure Thank it was a real much. pleasure to meet you. Would Don't you put me on the internet? No, um, <laughs> we, we won't do. Would you like a free copy of the Quran? Because we do have free copies. Okay, cool. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. you. You have a lovely day.